Hey everybody, it's Fraser here. I hope you guys are doing well. This is the third video of a three-part series on how to power through adversity and get through suffering and bad events in your life. The first video was on Roman era stoicism. The second video focused on kind of logotherapy therapy and how to suffer well or not suffer unnecessarily. Um, and then the third video here today is on some uh, mechanical techniques, some some implementation techniques when you start to go down in a downward spiral in your thinking in a sort of day-to-day -day context. The first part of that is a gratitude technique. The second part of it is a sort of positive self-talk reframing of that kind of negative cascade when you're thinking. And then the third one is sort of a, a technique I got from football, which is kind of an irrational confidence uh, in the face of uh, difficult circumstances or catastrophic thinking in, in this case. Uh, so again, the context for this, these, this three part series of videos um, is that, you know, suffering, I think is kind of a human baseline. I think everyone's going to have uh, situations in their life where uh, suffering occurs, you know, whether someone dies in the family, you lose a job, you get a job you don't like, or whatever the case may be, girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse dumps you, that kind of stuff. It's going to happen if you just wait around long enough. So there's, I think, sort of two ways to go about it. You can sort of just wait for those things to happen and see how you react, or you can kind of, uh, read and, and ingest some material like the material I'm going to give you today to try to inoculate yourself from the negative outcomes uh, that come along with not having a framework when adversity comes your way. Um, so again, these are the these are things that I've picked up over time. Uh, I've had some adversity in my life. Uh, and th in this video series, I specifically focused on, um, you know, I had a bad back injury that took me out for a couple of years, I had an autoimmune disorder as well that kind of put me out of, out of, uh, out of commission for a period of time. And I've cleared those hurdles now, but at the time it was difficult. Uh, so it was sort of a trial by fire to create some frameworks that work for me. It might not work for you, but at least it'll be food for thought, if nothing else. So the first, uh, there's three things that uh, that I that are gonna be the core part of this video. The first one is kind of a gratitude technique. The second one is a positive sort of self-talk reframing of, of, of sort of that negative cascade of thinking. Uh, if you're going down the rabbit hole of, of negative self-talk. And then the third one is kind of a, uh, um, a sort of a, a jolt start to when you feel yourself starting to go down down the hill of negative thoughts, uh, you can sort of uh, abort that process by just a quick sort of irrational confidence sort of insert technique. So the first one is a gratitude technique, which is uh, pretty much just what it sort of sounds like. Uh, essentially, whenever I find myself having a bad day up front, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be a bad day. Uh, or even on the back end where I'm like, you know what, like today I didn't do a very good job, you know, you start going down the rabbit hole thinking that, you know, you're, you're a piece of garbage or whatever the case may be. Uh, essentially what I'll do, if I, if, I'm, if I have enough awareness to see that my, I'm doing that negative kind of self-talk spiral uh, position uh, in my brain, um, I will actually uh, go through my day or go through what I've done in the last, you know, let's say a couple hours and just kind of give myself a pat on the back for different things that I've done. So for example, if it's in the morning, that'll literally be as simple as like, did you brush your teeth? Yes, I did. Perfect. And I'll give myself a little pat on the back. Again, it's not like, uh, like, um, I, I don't necessarily have to really truly believe it in the, in the context of like, wow, like, you know, you're so amazing. You brush your teeth, you ate breakfast, like, you know, you put on pants, like things like that. Again, it's just like getting those positive wins to kind of uh, juxtapose between the negative self-talk that's occurring. So for example, when I hurt my back, uh, originally, uh, I was, you know, full function beforehand and then really disabled afterwards. So I went from, you know, uh, six days a week working out, running around, doing anything I want to reckless abandon to within like a week, um, or a period of time, a short period of time went from, you know, can't walk for more than 30 minutes, can't sit for 30 minutes. You know, my, my, uh, my capacity for work, my capacity to do anything was a lot was, was significantly different. So when I would go into work, I would go, you know, I'd have my daily list of things to do and I wasn't able to clear all those out like I normally was. So that sort of made me, um, upset because you know i used to function at this level now that function at this level uh and those are two different things so what i would do uh, what, this is a technique i could have sort of used where i would actually go you know what fraser like let's look back at the day what did you do uh, you brushed your teeth great you know you walked your car i lived on the third floor of a building so i had to walk up and down the stairs uh walking up the stairs was actually not an easy task for me and would cause me like significant pain especially at the beginning so if i made it up the stairs instead of just being like you know power through and 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 uh and, and viewing as sort of like you know you used to be able to do this now now you can't like Ugh, or whatever I would, I would just reframe and be like wow you walked the stairs like fantastic job and just doing um, that technique often will send me off the spiral uh, and into a positive frame of mind almost immediately. Um, again, you don't necessarily have to believe it necessarily. You don't have to be like in your core being like wow you know brushing your teeth is a huge endeavor uh, but I do find that that technique 
works extremely well. And I just keep doing that over and over and over again, just going through like these lists of positive things until my brain goes, ah, you know what? You're doing good with what you've got. Uh, Cause again, and as per the first video in stoicism, you sort of don't control outcomes. You know, you can control your input, uh, but at the end of the day, like, you know, if your back is injured and you can't sit for 30 minutes, it's gonna be at a time, it's gonna be pretty hard to put in an eight hour day when you need to be sitting at a computer, right? So you have to, uh, to, so to, so to, to stack up the wins, whatever that means to you in your favor is actually to me psychologically very uh, mellowing. I do that on the, again, the front end, uh, when I feel myself going down the rails, but also at the end of the day, uh, if I'm sitting there like laying in bed and I'm sort of like, man, like this day was trash, I'll actually start going through the positives and then usually I'm falling asleep right away. Uh, just cause I've, I've, I've reframed that event to be like, you know what, Fraser, you're doing the best with what you got. Um, now of course my back is good and I'm, I'm higher function, but I think this applies in any scenario. So that's a good tool trick that I use almost on a daily basis whenever it comes up and I start to uh, wheel down into a sort of a spiral of negative thought. The second uh, piece of this video is kind of a positive reframing self-talk technique. So uh, often, um, at least historically, like old phrases, you know, sometimes I get like that negative kind of self-talk going in my brain, uh, whatever it might be, it might be like, you know, you're, you know, I hate my job or, you know, I hate my life or, you know, I don't think I'm very good or wh whatever it is. Like, you know, sort of you, it hooks onto you and you can sort of follow that around uh, for hours and maybe days, weeks, if you're not very good at uh, clearing that, that thought process out. Um, and so this is a thing that when I start to go down that rabbit hole, um, I just will manually insert into my brain. I just try to, try to, I try to take control. I, I observe the negative thought. I figure out that that's not good for me, that, that, that cascade of thinking. And then I just try to manually insert a new, a new sort of sentence in there. So for example, like if I, it was something like, um, my life sucks, like, you know, my life's the worst. I hate my life. I hate my life. Like that kind of thought process. I will, if, once I observe it, which again is introspection, you have to be able to sort of see yourself, you know, seeing yourself observe those thoughts and go, wow, I'm having this negative feeling. So that's the first step. But once you, once you're able to do that, uh, then I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, insert a sentence being like, you know, um, I want my life to be better versus my life sucks. And again, like that sounds trivial kind of, but often for me and apply it in your own life that, that my, my brain fights myself when I insert that sentence into the, into the, like the, into the, um, into the works, I suppose, like in, into the, into the negative, um, spiraling sort of emotions. It, it just sort of like, it's such a, it's such a contrast that it sort of jolts the system. Um, another example would be like, you know, if, when I was sick, for example, when I had this autoimmune thing, I would often say, you know, like, I don't want to be sick. Like I hate being sick. Why me again, going down that cascade. Uh, and very quickly I could just go, you know what, I'm going to move to be healthy. I want to be healthy. I'm going to do something like that. Right. And then it instantly pivots you from wallowing in self doubt and self flagellation to instantly you're going, what can I do? That's positive. So it does actually have, at least for me anyways, um, a component of forcing you to act in the way that you probably should. Again, if you watch the first two videos, it's like, you know, um, even in like the sort of stoic stuff, it's like, you know, wh why, why can't you handle the burden? Don't ask yourself that question. You probably won't like the answer, you know? And often if you're in the self wallowing thing, if you just ask yourself, like, why am I thinking like this? Like, like, should I, like, is it, is it up to my highest level of capacity to, to be thinking like this? Am I expressing myself in the truest form by, you know, wallowing in self despair? Obviously not. And this is a good way is a, as, a, as a manual technique, not a philosophy per se, a technique to jam in there to sort of give yourself that space to go, you know, I've got a kind of binary option here. Let's go towards something that's useful for me or positive. Another one would be like, a, you know, like I, I, I hate my job. Like my, I hate going to work. This, this has been my case on occasion, uh, especially like when I was injured and stuff, like uh, I would often um, feel uh, anxious to go into work because the job was relatively physically orientated. And, you know, like, like for, I was in law enforcement at the time. So being a police officer requires you uh, to be physically capable, that's sort of like a, uh, a stereotype, but um, a part of the, the persona that you encapsulate when you are a police officer. So often I would have anxiety going into work because I'm like, well, I'm not that person anymore. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mournful of that. Uh, and so then I would just, ref I just manually insert, like, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to leverage this situation. What an opportunity, right? And I, but again, it's just, it's, it's a black and white flip. I'm just manually inserting it and I'll fight myself on that for you know 10 minutes and I just keep hammering at it, hammering and hammering at it. And eventually my brain goes, that's more useful, Psh, new pathway, right? So that's worked really well for me. Um, again, it's just, it's just a, a, a flipping. It's a, mechan it's a mechanical process to just sort of, um, sort of uh, cold start your software, you know? Um, and the last one is kind of an irrational confidence technique. Um, this, this often applies uh, when I'm having like, let's say anxiety about like work or heavy workload or things that are in, in coming up in the future. Uh, so essentially, um, and I actually got this kind of from, from football and, and from like high level sports and stuff where often the best players will go, 
uh, into a scenario where even if they know they're going to lose or have a negative outcome, they're like, let's do it, right? So in the football context, uh, if I was playing the best I could, uh, it doesn't matter who's lined up against me. I, in my mind, I'm the best, right? Um, and even if I know I'm going to lose a scenario, like it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we're playing basketball or whatever, uh, if, I'm, if I'm a confident player, I'm going to go in there not thinking I'm going to lose, right? And even if you do know you're going to lose, like you're playing Michael Jordan or LeBron James or whatever, uh, if you go into, into it with that attitude, you're going to get crushed, right? So often, at least good athletes and, and people in the in, in all realms, I feel like they have this kind of technique where they flick that switch and they just go, I'm the best, let's kill it. Um, I do this at work all the time. Often uh, my job is, uh, the, that I'm currently in has puts me in environments that I've never been in before and maybe it's a one only, right? It's a meeting with people I'll only meet once. It's a topic that I'm only gonna engage with maybe once. So I'm not an expert in that topic, but I gotta like do something useful. Uh, and often I'm really nervous to go into those meetings. Uh, because I'm just like not that knowledgeable on let's say the particular subject and there's no way I can be. So often I'll literally be at the door uh, and I'll go, okay, you're the best that there ever was at this, bam. So it's just, I just flick that switch and I'd use that irrational confidence to power through that scenario. Now, of course it, it sort of sounds arrogant, but again, it's a tool set. I don't, I don't truly believe that I'm the best. Like, I don't think I'm gonna like beat Michael Jordan at basketball, you know, in his prime or whatever, but, but it's, it's, it's the framework to just force yourself to square up to that challenge and power through it. And of course this applies uh, to uh, adverse, adversity, just generally speaking, but also when you're in sort of perpetually negative scenario. So I would often use this again, like in the, in the, the, when I had my back injury, when I had my autoimmune stuff, um, often again, I would be sitting there and I'd go, you know, like, uh, what would be a good example would be like, uh, even recently I had a, uh, a work scenario where a whole bunch of work piled up on me. I'm doing a whole bunch of extracurricular stuff that's like tens of hours a week, uh, which is fantastic. Like I enjoy all these things. I'm, I'm purposely doing these on purpose, uh, purposely pursuing these things. Um, and and what happened essentially was uh, I had sort of three day runway of just so much work. There's just no way in my mind I could get it all done in that period of time. So that created a lot of anxiety uh, in me, which you know makes sense. Like how could it not? And uh, I remember laying in bed and I was sitting there and I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, like my heart's going like a thousand miles a minute. And I thought, man, like, you know, uh, how am I going to get, how am I going to get this done? Oh my gosh. And then I essentially just went through the three part, uh, three things that I just referred to. So the first thing I did was like gratitude. I was like, oh, like, well, you know, today you work like a dog. Let's go through it. I was like, brush my teeth, ate breakfast, ate lunch, did a workout even, right? Like 15 minutes, just kind of like, you know, did some push ups or whatever the case may have been. Uh, and then just ran through it. And I was like, hey, and I'm in bed at like a reasonable time. Like, you know, that's pretty good. Heart rates, 10 down right off that, right? Because I'm restructuring and reframing it, right? And the next thing I was like, oh, like time to do some positive talk versus, you know, I'm so worried about this event, like I, I'm gonna get crushed to what an opportunity, like, you know, this can be good for me. Like maybe it's a challenge in, uh, you know, uh, in, in suffering well, right? Or a challenge in, um, in discipline on how hard I can work over the next three days or whatever it might be. Um, and then the last one is just like, oh, you know what? That irrational confidence and I'm like, Let's, you know, again, I'm laying in my bed, right? So I'm like, let's square up to it, at least cognitively. And I was like, cool, I was built for this. I'm gonna kill it, like I'm, I'm the man. Yeah, like let's, like tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'm just gonna like power through this and not like, you know, I'm just gonna, the, the walls are gonna melt because I'm gonna be so intense just powering through this stuff. Uh, and, and literally, uh, after those kind of three things, like just, just that quick actually, I was just like, boom, I was like, huh, this is totally fine. I just reframed it. Uh, and I actually, like I was laying in bed completely in the dark and I had a little smile and then I just slept like a champ, like just totally at peace, woke up eight hours later, went through the day, powered through those three days, no problem. So, um, again, uh, th th that there's utility in these concepts. Uh, and I, I applied this, you know, when I was actually like with my back injury and with my sort of autoimmune thing, um, I applied this a lot, right? You know, like I'd be in scenarios where it's like, oh, like, you know, my back hurts again today, you know, that sucks. Like this is gonna ruin my day or, you know, I'm, I'm having sort of autoimmune symptoms that are gonna make me less effective. Uh, you know, I just apply that irrational confidence in whatever the task was. Like, you know what, you're gonna go grocery shopping. You're the best damn grocery shopper that ever there was. And you're gonna figure out a way to like maneuver, c carry those groceries or push the cart uh, even though you're disabled doesn't mean you're not like the best grocery shopper ever. Now that sounds stupid because <laughs> it sort of is, uh, but it was useful in just, you know, forcing myself to get out of that rut. And uh, again, easier said than done, um, but that's something that's, uh, that's served me really well uh, in, in all these different scenarios that I've had adversity. So I've received feedback from the first two videos I've made uh, and it's been really good uh, comments. One of the things that has been said though is that you know it's easy to follow along with some of the concepts I've described 
Uh, it sounds all really good in theory, but does it work in practicality? Like, you know, it's easy to say, harder to do. Um, and, and I think that that's a very valid point. So I will give you the context that um, it wasn't, I didn't just come across these concepts uh, arbitrarily and, and write back to back. Uh, it took many years and many books and powering through a lot of different concepts to find things that really work for me. So the first thing I would say is that these are not like the uh, end all be all of, of how to power through adversity um, in regards to the, there's other philosophical or theological um, or even a sort of psychological I implements that you can do to man maneuver through reality in a way that's meaningful to you. Uh, so this is just essentially meant, to, like this was what works for me, uh, but it might not work for you, but it should be food for thought that there are, um, you know, ways to do this, uh, to, to maneuver through adversity effectively. So that's the first bit. The, the second bit is that um, once I found these frameworks that kind of work for me, you know, it, it's a never ending process. I'm continuing to evolve and, and adapt and, and, and make them better given context. Cause you know, as time moves on, things change, uh, context change. So maybe you need to change your techniques as well um, and, and framework. So this is a never ending process. Uh, and I just personally enjoy, you know, uh, reading these kind of things and getting uh, it, intimate with this kind of material. Uh, but that being said, um, I have had lots of practice as well. So, you know, uh, just luck luckily or unluckily, uh, depending on how you view it, uh, you know, being in law enforcement, you know, I'm always in scenarios that were, uh, that had adversity baked into the, into the job, right? So I go to events that were, you know, high stress on a regular basis. Uh, and in, in that context, you know, it's, it's good practice to implement these strategies to, you know, see, to, to, for me to power through adverse scenarios. Um, and so that, you know, whether that's good or bad is just sort of the nature of, of my reality for a long period of time. Um, and then also with my back injury and this autoimmune thing, you know, with the autoimmune, I thought at one point I might actually croak, right? So there was, uh, again, you know, uh, lots of adversity in that and lots of opportunities to, you know, suffer well, let's say. Um, and, and that has made me, I think, uh, given me lots of opportunities uh, to become quite resilient. So at, when I, you know, maybe Fraser from three or four years ago uh, would have handled scenarios much differently than I do currently. And that's even more true if you go farther back. You know, Fraser at 20 in university, if he had a bad day, that might follow me for a couple of days, right? I might perceive myself as, you know, a goof and be caught in that negative spiral for days until, you know, I, I'm, I call my mom and I'm like, oh, I'm in a bad state. And she slaps me and go through the phone and go, oh, now I'm back to normal, right? So now though, I, I feel like I'm sort of a self-contained unit and I'm pretty comfortable uh, being in situations that are difficult. Um, I don't look, look them out, I don't look to suffer for no reason, but when I find myself, when life presents me negative situations, I find that I power through them really well. And I honestly, unless something really terrible has happened, I don't really have bad days anymore. And by that, I mean, I don't find myself in, in, the, in the, the negative self-talk. So I can sit in a room by myself all day and not go down the rails. And that has taken me years to get to that point. Uh, and you know, it's a lot of mindfulness, being able to like look back at yourself and go, oh, hey, I'm, I'm, I see myself going down the rails and then applying some of these insights, these frameworks to, 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 uh, to jump out of that rut before it begins. Uh, but, but also it's like, you know, just lots of reps. And I'm at the point now where, you know, if I have, if I'm sort of sad, quote unquote, for a couple hours, that's really my fault because I've got the skill set and I've had the practice to, uh, to get out of that. And a good way to think of it is, you know, um, like, you know, if I gave you a violin, but you've never played it before, it's not likely that you're going to be cracking out some like, you know, classical music that sounds very good, you know, like you're going to need some reps for that uh, and lots of practice. So I perceive this as the same thing. Um, it, it, you need a lot of reps to you know, play a song that's worth listening to, if that makes sense. Uh, but again, like, you know, you're gonna maybe not be very effective at it first, but, uh, cause I wasn't either. Like, you know, I, if when I was applying like stoicism or local therapy to different scenarios, often it was like very academic and I could apply it when things were good. But then when I go down the rabbit hole, it's very hard to implement. But now I'm at the point where I can implement that stuff and I jump out of it. It's just getting that muscle memory. It's the same as if you went to like the gym and you've never worked out. Uh, you know, it's unlikely you're gonna be the strongest guy in the gym, but you know what, if you put in a couple of years and lots of reps and keep your nutrition right and, you know, try to, uh, uh, put in the best work on that. Maybe in a couple of years, you're one of the strongest guys in, or girls in the gym, right? So it's a, it's an analogy to that. This is a skill set. Uh, you don't just pick up the, the the framework and then it just magically implements. I think it, it you should perceive these kind of thoughts or these frame these philosophical frameworks or you know uh, psychological implements as a as a tool that you can leverage uh, when required, right? So. 
um, that's a good way to perceive it. So power through it and maybe uh, I think you'll have success with this stuff. But again, uh, if it's not your jam, find something else that fits your sort of personality better and, and, and leverage it. Because it, it has worked for me. It materially has worked for me. I objectively am a um, more re resilient person. And I could say I'm happier or more content with my life on a day-to-day -day basis with these frameworks. Um, and then, so that's sort of it. Uh, I'll keep uh, powering through this kind of material, making more content. Uh, this is a never ending process for me. I enjoy this stuff immensely. So I'll keep on, uh, keep on reading and keep on sharing with you guys uh, until you, someone tells me not to. Um, yeah, feel free to sign up or subscribe and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.